Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see MOSFET fabrication and scaling. This is the part 2 of the chapter 2. Okay. In this, I am going to cover NMOS fabrication and then even tell you about PMOS and CMOS fabrication. Okay. So let's get started. For NMOS, the first thing to understand is that we need to have a substrate of silicon okay this substrate of silicon since we are making nmos that is why this substrate must be of p type so we have taken silicon substrate of p type and on that we have a thick field oxide okay we put a layer of thick field oxide that is sio2 layer now this sio2 layer okay about this sio2 layer is grown by thermal oxidation and it acts as a shield that protects this substrate from any damage okay so this is the first step for making any uh, i can say mosfet either be pmos cmos or nmos first you have to take a substrate and on that substrate you need to deposit sio2 layer okay now the next step is photo resist and lithography okay now what is this photo resist photo resist is actually a light sensitive and acid resistant inorganic polymer and its properties change on exposure to uv light okay so what happens now is that we take the sio2 layer okay we take the SiO2 layer and on that we deposit a photoresist. Now this photoresist is of two types. Either it can be positive photoresist or it can be negative photoresist. What is positive photoresist? A positive photoresist is initially insoluble. Okay, insoluble in solvent I mean. But if we expose it to UV light, it becomes soluble to UV rays. And a negative photoresist, it is soluble initially, but if we expose it to UV light, it becomes insoluble. Okay. Now, what we do that we, here we have taken a positive photoresist. Initially, it is insoluble. Okay. That is why we then take a glass mask. What is this glass mask? Glass mask is nothing but a piece of, I can say, glass whose two sides are covered with a black I can say paper or something or it is covered basically okay and a region is left open from this region we put UV light what this UV light does is that it dissolves actually like synthesizes this photoresist and since this is positive photoresist after exposure to uv light it becomes soluble in chemical solvent so after exposure we use chemical solvent like mostly hf okay hf acid to remove this photoresist part okay and with that this sio2 layer is also removed it does not harm this p sub p type uh, silicon substrate by doing such we remove and finally get this type of wafer okay so p substrate and this is sio2 substrate first we do lithography now this process okay okay this process is known as lithography right so first you have to like expose it to uv light then by exposing it to uv light you clear out this part using hf or any such solvent and after that you get something like this there is photoresist left here and here okay so what you do is that take out this photoresist using some other solvent not by hf but some other solvent now the reason why i have colored everything is that because it is said that human mind can retain anything which is in colored form and that is why I have colored it. But in exam, you do, do not need to show off your artistic skills. 
doing it in normal manner is good enough there is no need to color it so let's move forward now we have to make the gate why gate first because the gate will decide where my source and drain points will lie so what we do is that we have this substrate we have this fox fox is nothing but my sio2 layer okay also called as field oxide that is why i have named it as fox field oxide over that we deposit a layer of thin gate oxide so you can see this is orange colored thin gate oxide below that i have field oxide in brown color and below that i have si substrate after this we deposit polysilicon over it now polysilicon is as good as a metal and why metal because what we are doing is making gate and this gate must have electrical conductivity now what gives electrical conductivity either metal or you can use polysilicon which is as good as a metal so that is why i have polysilicon layer red in color below that i have thin gate oxide orange in color and then below that i have field oxide that is sio2 brown in color now with the help of lithography i remove the excess of polysilicon okay only this much part is left remaining and below that as usual i have thin gate oxide okay now i even remove this two parts this part and this part using lithography so what i am left with is something like this okay now i have this gate here now this is p type that is why there needs to be a well of n plus type okay so now moving on i will have formation of n plus region and metal contacts okay so what we do is we do a higher concentration of donor impurities that is n plus using either diffusion or ion implementation implantation sorry ion implantation and how is it done it is like you take the ions and then deposit it or implant it push it inside the p type silicon substrate using mostly the laser method because that gives you a perfect area where to deposit the ions so we deposit the ions now this diagram is very short you don't have to make very short like this okay so i have made this diagram where you can easily see the n plus region i have colored the n plus region as green so i have this n plus region i have this sio2 layer from previous i have this thin gate oxide region from previous i have this polysilicon for gate this is thin oxide and over that now i deposit again sio2 layer okay after depositing this sio2 layer and then i will do lithography again after lithography i get something like this okay why did i do this because i needed to make a clear area okay and also protect this gate right so i have to protect this gate i also have to make a clear area for depositing metal to make my drain and source so i have this gate here and i make this area clear and also protect my gate by depositing sio2 layer here and now i have to just deposit metal so now what is the first thing that i do is i deposit metal all over this over whole of this and then using lithography i cut out this region where my metal is present i have colored the metal part as blue okay so i have metal connection there 
so this will form my drain and source these two metals i have gate in middle and a small amount of drilling is required through this sio2 layer to reach to the gate and i have this n plus regions and below that i have p substrate and with this we finish n mos fabrication okay so these were the steps i'm sure you must have understood it they are very simple steps now if in exam you are asked to fabricate pmos okay you have to if you are asked to show the fabrication of pmos transistor nothing changes okay the steps remain the same all the steps that you saw until now all will remain same just instead of this p type silicon you will have n type and instead of n plus you will have p plus okay if you do these two changes it becomes pmos transistor fabrication okay now the third one that can be asked is cmos process now cmos is basically of two types either of n well process or p well process so i will just show the diagram of how it must look the process remains the same okay the process and by process i mean the steps first photoresist then glass mask then using lithography you have to etch it out then you have to deposit thin oxide layer then you have to deposit polysilicon then using lithography again etch it out then you have to like clear the area then you have to deposit n plus or p plus impurity whatever is required then deposit sio2 again then remove the sio2 part to make space for drain and source then deposit metal and then you are done so if you have to make cmos using let's say n well process i will show the final diagram how it must look okay so first thing to understand a cmos will have something like this if i am talking about n well process so n well process will need p substrate okay first take the p substrate and in that you need to have n well and by n well i mean a big region of n type now this part okay this dotted line will separate this is my p type this is my n type and combination of both of them will give me cmos okay so i can call this part as my n mos i can call this part as my p mos and combination of both of them will give me cmos so my this is n well so here i need to have a gate and then here i need to have p plus and p plus and here will be my source and drain okay and in this p substrate i will need to have n plus and n plus there will be gate in between and here i will be having source and drain now this two can be connected together basically i mean they can have same metal deposition over themselves this will be separate this will be separate the steps required will be the same first deposit oil everything okay then cut it out like using lithography then deposit n plus n plus here deposit p plus p plus here and then deposit metal finally and have drain and source and you will have cmos n well why n well because you have used a n well here now if you are asked to make p well so you will have n substrate here and instead of n well you will have p well here and if this is p well this automatically becomes n plus impurities and this becomes p plus impurities and then all these steps remain the same i hope you have understood at least nmos fabrication and pmos fabrication and if you just read out cmos fabrication once it will be all clear to you thank you